Okay, hey guys, this is uh, Rev Sean over at the Centered Path. So let's talk a little bit about the three refuges. It's called the Tisarana. Let's go jump right into it, guys. The, if you downloaded the, the document, the Tisarana, which is the three refuges, uh, you can go do that at the um, centerpath.org. Or you can, um, well, that's kind of the best place you can get it. That's really the only place you can get it. Um, you can also download the um, two-page cheat sheet for basic Buddhism. We're going to talk a little bit about each of the different things. So this is, I don't remember which section this is. But one of the sections, you can start wherever you want because it all comes back to the beginning anyway. And we're going to talk about what's called the three refuges. The three refuges, if you've heard of them, or if you've heard them, more commonly said, um, as far as I know, in Theravada um, and Mahayana. Uh, not as much in, in Vajrayana, although we do hear it sometimes. Um, it's a chant that we'll hear it in the beginning of many meditations and many Dharma talks. And it, it basically is, uh, I go to the Buddha for refuge, um, I go to the, sangha, the the Dharma for refuge, and I go to the Sangha for refuge. Now what we mean by refuge is really guidance. So some places now are starting to change that into a, like a, the translation is being, I, I go to the, the Buddha for guidance, I go to the the Dharma for guidance, I go to the Sangha for guidance. And the guidance is, is like your promise for, for, for paying attention and, to, and to, to, to work with the teachings. Okay, So <clears throat> when we say it in Pali, it is Buddham Saranam Gakchami, Dhammam Saranam Gakchami, Sangham Saranam Gakchami, which is uh, the, the, the Buddha I go to for, for, for guidance, the Dharma I go to for guidance, the Sangha I go to for guidance. And there's always, we always say it a second and a third time. Because when you say something three times, it means you really mean it. You can say something wrong once, maybe twice, but three times we know that you meant it. And this is the way you actually become a Buddhist. <laughs> you, you take the three refuges as the step one. And the step two would be to take the five precepts, which we talk about later. Um, but if you take, you're going to hear this, uh, basically it's, it's Buddham Saranam Gakchami, Dhammam Saranam Gakchami, Sangham Saranam Gakchami, Duryampe Buddham Saranam Gakchami, Duryampe Dhammam Saranam Gakchami, Duryampe Sangham Saranam Gakchami Tariyampe Buddham Saranam Gakchami Tariyampe Dhammam Saranam Gakchami Tariyampe Sangham Saranam Gakchami And we've said it three times and then typically the rest of the group would say Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu which means well said, well said well said and it's important to do that because then we're like we're acknowledging and this this makes the the work on this because we've said it three times Duryampi is a second time and Tadiyampi is a third time in Pali and uh, when we've said something three times we're, we're showing our seriousness and our commitment to it so we do this before whenever we meditate it's a really good centering kind of chant and meditation it's just kind of like help to refocus us especially if we understand what it means if we don't understand what it means it's still beneficial but i think it's always better to understand um it, it's not quite like you're promising to join a gang or something like that but we're just we're, we're promising for ourselves to take the guidance under the buddha the dharma and the sangha the buddha the the teaching so if we look at like <coughs> the 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 buddha the, the first part the, the buddham saranam gakchami we're looking more at like the external the outer refuge is in the 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 teacher the teacher which is sakyamuni buddha or we say siddhartha gautama who became the buddha right he became the white awakened one right the buddha is awakened one it means he's awake so when he when he came to after his meditation he said i am buddha I am awakened. I have woken up. There's no more dirt in my eyes. I can see clearly is basically this. The second one is the where where the 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 inner refuge for the the first one, the Buddha, is the awakening. We're trying to 
uh, work on our own awakening is what we're doing. We're, we're committing to our own awakening as we're doing it. And then the third part is, is we're committing to understanding the what's called the void or emptiness or non-substantiality which doesn't mean there's nothing but it just means there's nothing substantial about anything uh, that's a whole other conversation which we'll have to have at another time but basically the void means or emptiness means uh, that it is empty of any lasting substantial stuff information ideas okay we'll get into it. it's a big philosophical uh gymnastics that we'll, we'll get into and, and and remember we're trying to approach this always from how can we deal with it spiritually uh philosophically and religiously so this is that's just step one right there step two is going to be the when we do uh uh uh, uh dhammam there's the dhammam is, 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 is we don't say dharma we say dhamma which is Pali. Dharma is Sanskrit and Dhamma is Pali. So this is that's the only little difference, and that's why it's the way it is. Uh, the the external refuge is is the way. Okay, you could say the Tao if you're looking at people who are Taoist out there or studying Lao Tzu or Zhuang Tzu and stuff like that. We're looking at actually the way things are, and that's why Taoism and Buddhism are so closely related philosophically. The second one is the experiential understanding, which is internally. Like I want to experience it for myself by myself kind of thing and it's very important for you to experience everything like if i hold up a glass of water you don't know if it's actually water or vinegar or vodka you have no idea until you taste it you, you can never know i can tell you all kinds of things about it it's hot water cold water but you'll never know until you experience it and that's important to understand that's an important part to conceptualize as we're working with it and the third one is is uh damam saranam gachami we're also looking into clarity how we can see things clearly see things as they are right the the, the 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 dharma of it the dharma of it the, the Tao of it the way of it is what we were now the third part is the sangha which we're looking at externally the guides that we have which are our teachers which are our books that we may have um having a good teacher or good teachers is always important um i suggest that you go to a a traditional a cultural um, Buddhist center and pick a couple if you can and go to them and see what they have to say and and, and experience that and and really you know, you'll get a flavor for it and see how you like it or not you might not like it you know but you might really like it um, this third the second one the internal um, <coughs> refuge of the Sangha part is the making use of the experience that you had so remember we we're talking about being very the, the, the experiential understanding now how are we going to use it we use it in our community. We use it with the people that we interact with all the time, with ourselves, our mental processes. And the third part, which is the, the secret experience, the direct experience, is going to be the uh, uh, unrestricted experience, which means uh, really as you get deeper into the community, you start to step back from it and can see it better. As you get deeper into yourself and your own mind, you tend to step back from it and you'll be able to see it as a as a as an observer, as a, as a scientist or as an artist. Like when a scientist looks at something, for example, a flower before they've torn it apart and dissected it, they want to really look at it and see how it reacts with the environment that it's in. Same thing with artists. You want to see how the light is approaching your subject and how the contrast is and the outline and the, the surroundings and the background and the foreground and these kind of things. Now, when you take the refuge ceremony it's kind of like a baptism but we don't really do any you know water or anything like that you just basically make an offering to the the altar the buddha usually of uh, incense if it's mahayana and uh, if it's um perhaps it could be water it could be anything i mean it's, it's just it's, you're making an offering uh for the the buddha the dharma the sangha you're making a a commitment to work with the buddha the dharma and the sangha for yourself and, and you may later take the what's called the bodhisattva vow, which is to help all other sentient beings. So um, the other thing, too, with this is usually with a, with a refuge ceremony, you'll get what's called a dharma name. And um, uh, I've had a couple because I've done a few of the ceremonies. Uh, my dharma name is Dhamma Jivaka, which means the good son of the dharma. And there's many different ones. There's Dhamma Jyoti and Dhamma Ruchi and Dhamma Pala and Dhamma Kusla and all these different kind of things. And those all have different meanings. It has something to do with the way, you know, the the protector of the way, you know, the Dhammapala and the the um, 
uh, uh, protector, the keeper, the, the learner of the way, the, the child of the way, stuff like that. So there are these little meaningful names that you don't have to use, but they're, it's kind of like your baptismal name. And it's, it's just a tradition. So that's basically, it's called T. Sarana. And I'll go ahead and we'll end out with the same thing. And what we do is every time we begin meditation, we'll do the T. Sarana. Okay, so it's basically very simple. Buddham Saranam Gakchami Dhammam Saranam Gakchami Sangham Saranam Gakchami Duryampe Buddham Saranam Gakchami Duryampe Dhammam Saranam Gakchami Duryampe Sangham Saranam Gakchami Tariyampe Buddham Saranam Gakchami Tariyampe Dhammam Saranam Gakchami Tariyampe Sangham Saranam Gakchami Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu May you have a great day. Do T. Sarana. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know how I'm doing. Uh, leave a comment if you like. And we hope you have a great day. Don't forget to look up those documents on thecenteredpath.org. Take care.